Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. <coughs> Don't know how this one has, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, how this one has slipped under the wire. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've had one of these beers. And uh, a good friend of mine that lives here in the Roanoke Valley uh, has followed me, one of my subscribers. And uh, he came up to the house a couple of weeks ago and, and, and brought me some beers. Uh, that I haven't reviewed, and this was one of them, and he, he brought me, and I said, yeah, I've had it, but it's been a long time ago, and, and, and you're right, I have not reviewed this one, so he brought it up for me to review, and we're going we're gonna to get it on here, so Evan, thanks uh, for bringing those beers up, I do appreciate it, I did appreciate sitting out on the, on the deck with you, and, and, and sipping on a beer, and uh, smoking a cigar with you, uh, it was uh, really nice meeting you, I do appreciate you bringing the beers up. It was uh, very nice of you. So, uh, and like I said, guys, this is one that's it's, it's, uh, slipped under the wire, and uh, and, uh, and it's available here. Uh, he he bought it here in the Roanoke Valley, and this is just one of them that I just haven't reviewed. So we're gonna do it now. So this is Founders Brewing. This is their cur curmudgeon old ale, and what what that is on this one, it's 9.8 percent, and this one was bottled in January. Uh, 13th of 2015 and it is an old ale brewed with molasses and then oak aged so uh, there is no reason why you can't sell this beer for a long time I can't think of a single reason uh, you could not buy one of these or, or, or a six pack of these and, and enjoy them at your leisure and whether that be in a month or two six months a year five years ten years down the road uh, uh, it's just going to get probably better with age on this one and this one's been in the bottle for uh, almost seven months uh, right at seven months on, on this one in the bottle so and I don't know how long they age it on oak before they bottle it uh, uh, being this big at 9.8 percent it's gonna keep for a long time so uh, it's one of these one of those beers that you could uh, you could buy one two three or a whole six pack of them and and drink them at your leisure drink one now when you pick it up and and drink one a year from now, and two years from now, five, six years, ten years from now, whenever you feel like it. So, uh, let's get on with this one. Uh, the IBUs on this one they're saying here uh, is 50. It says, this old ale conjures up thoughts of classic seafaring ports. Their local pubs and weathered fishermen that frequent them. And traditional style curmudgeon is brewed with an intense focus on the malt bill creating a very strong rich malty characteristics and a sweetness indicative of its cousin the barley wine. We are especially proud of the balance in this beer making it deceptively smooth and drinkable at 9.8 percent alcohol. It says editors note the 2006 bottle version has been aged in bourbon barrels. So this is not the 2006. This is the 2015 edition. So any of you guys that's got the 2006 bottle aging in your cellar or in the fridge, uh, you got lucky because it was aged in bourbon barrels. For it doesn't say what these are; it just says oak barrels. So maybe they're putting them in just plain Jane oak barrels that's never had any whiskey or bourbon or or wine or rum or or all different kinds of uh, barrels that they use for aging beers. And now, uh, sky's the limit. Now, I mean. It, it doesn't really matter what was in it before. If it had alcohol in it before, people, the brewers now want to put beer in it just to see how that changes it up. So, uh, food, for, <coughs> food pairings for this beer, guys, says here for an old ale, old ale, cheese is buttery, brie, good, Havarti, and Swiss, and the glass bars a pint, uh, Becker and Alec Tumbler, Snipper, oversized wine glass. I got my favorite glass, the Sauvignon beer glass here today, guys. And it says here it can be sold for a long, long time. So 
a pure option. That's one of the one of the beers you can pick up and and uh, whatever your uh, whatever your heart desires. Uh, drink it any time you feel like it because it's going to keep for quite a while. All right. Don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. Uh, I've received a uh, an email from the people at Snake Bite uh, bottle openers or beer openers. And uh, they want to know if uh, they can send me a, one of their openers to, to try out. And I've got it. I received it. And I may bring it out on the next beer, beer review and just to show you uh, what it looks like and, and, and put their website in. If you're not interested in one of these, uh, uh, I don't want to say Greg beer review because this is basically like a uh, butterfly knife. Uh, and there is a name for that, but it escapes me right now. Uh, a lot of people don't aren't into this style of the openers uh, and this is just a, a it looks like a, a regular church key style opener except it's, it's got the uh, the, uh, the opener I'll, I'll show you I'll, I'll try to bring it out on the next beer review or, or sometime within the next week and show you what it looks like and give you that information uh, uh, it works on cans it works on bottles uh, it, it's a really neat little thing comes in its own little keychain type leather pouch so I'll bring that out and show it to you but we're going to use Greg's beer review bottle up here today. So. Nice little hiss, not a massive hiss. Let's pour it down the center, guys. What do you think? Well, it didn't pour a very big head. About a half a finger. It's barely covering the top of the beer here. And for what I remember having this, it's probably been five or six years ago since I've had one of these. It was a very nice beer at the time. Uh, it was a little strong for my palate at the time, so as time's gone on with all these beer reviews that I've done, hopefully uh, I will enjoy it a little more than I did when it about blowed my palate out of my mouth at the time. So, As you can see, the head is basically dissipated. It's just now covering this. I mean, it's hardly any head at all. Over to the light, it is a nice, rich, uh, dark amber color. Uh, a lot of bubbles are streaming up, really fine, tight bubbles streaming up on the beer. I can see the bulb through it, but it's not perfectly clear. It's got a, it's got a cloudiness to it. A little more visible down in the thinner part of the glass. But a nice, uh, rich uh, red color on this one. Let's get a nose on it and see what we can pick up. I mean, if I was blindfolded and smell on this, it's, it's, it's very sweet smell. It does smell like a barley wine. And it smells like, you know, they've used either some uh, candy sugar. It says molasses, so they've used molasses on it. Uh, or you, uh, a lot of that sweetness uh, could come from a candy sugar also. Very sweet smelling. I mean, it's got a very sweet back end on it. And getting some very nice, rich malts. Smells very tasty, so let's give it a try. It's been quite a while since I've had one of these. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Evan. Thank you, sir. He has some butterscotch in there, too. Yeah, it's very pleasant. Very well-made beer. The alcohol is very well hidden, very well made. We're at almost 10%. It's pretty tasty. It is pretty tasty. Like I said, this is just going to get better and better with age as all this comes together in the bottle. Uh, depending on how you're storing it, whether you're storing it at 70 degrees or 50 degrees, will uh, will change the way the beer ages and how it tastes over time. It's really subdued. I was expecting, from what I remember, it to be just, I mean, off the chain, but it's been quite a few years since I've had one of these, and it's, my palate has really changed over the last five years. Right now, it's pretty damn tasty. It, it is uh, definitely not uh, blowing my palate out of my mouth. It's very subdued to me uh, as uh, the first time that I had it. 
uh, I thought it was boozy and I thought it was uh, too sweet and I thought this and I thought that and I, th I, I really didn't care for it a lot because my palate wasn't up to drinking a 10% beer and enjoying it as of now I love them. Getting just some slight hints of vanilla in there from the oak barrels. A little bit of woodiness in there. But the sweet malt and the molasses is standing out more than anything else to me. Very nice, very well made old ale. I would like to see them do these in the, in the bourbon barrels instead of just the plain Jane whiskey barrels. I'm a, I'm a sucker for the bourbon barrel aged beers. Even though this one is uh, barrel aged, it's not bourbon or whiskey barrels. It's probably just a plain Jane oak barrel. So uh, not had any whiskey or anything in it before. And whether they're reusing these oak barrels for this and, and, and or what they're doing, I, I have no clue. I have no clue. But this one seems to be very tasty. Very nice. Uh, a nice sipper, if you will, at 10%. This is so easy drinking. You could, you could chug several of these and before you know it, <laughs> You got your damn buzz going on. So, if you're drinking a beer of this of this alcohol content, ten percent, just be aware that you're drinking that much alcohol at a time. And if you're sitting at a bar and you drink three or four of these, and you try to drive home, you you may get into some trouble there. I mean, I wouldn't want to see anybody get into trouble. You may be looking at the long arm of Johnny Law at the end of a flashlight or something. And it doesn't take much, even if you think you can drive. You can go through a, a, a sobriety checkpoint or just a license check and they have little devices on their flashlights and stuff that detects the alcohol and uh, here in Virginia you could drink probably one maybe two of these depending on how big a fella or, or, or girl you are and how you, you're used to doing it uh, and drinking beer uh, and you might think you're okay but here in Virginia I'm, and all the states are different uh, even if you're not, even if you drink one and you go through a sort of sobriety checkpoint and, and you're not over the legal limit, which is .08 here in Virginia, uh, say you, uh, the, the, they get you out of the car and you blow an 05 or an 06 or an 04, they're going to write you up for an impaired driving. It's not a DUI, but it's still, it's, you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get a ticket. So uh, I don't know what consequences that has here in Virginia because I've never, I've, ne I've never had one, so knock on wood. I try to do most of my drinking here at the house now. Uh, uh, as a young fella, I, I ran the gamut and bar to bar and, and drank, drank, and drank, and drank, and, and drank some more. And drank enough to float a battleship around. Uh, but I got lucky. I was one of the lucky ones. So uh, there's a lot more police officers out there now than there was back when I was a 20 year old. So. A lot of harder to get away with it here, especially here in this town. Uh, there is absolutely there is zero tolerance for it here in this town. So enough of me flapping my gums about it. Be responsible when you drink. Be responsible when you're drinking beers of this magnitude. Just be aware. It's easy drinking it as it is. It's really easy to power down three or four or, or more of these kind of beers, and before you know it, you're stumbling out the door to your car, and everybody's seen those commercials. I mean. Uh, they're everywhere, and it don't take much to get caught. And if you're over the legal limit, that's a ten thousand dollar process. Losing your license, VASAP, or whatever state you're in calls it for the uh, the class you have to go to, lawyer fees, court costs. I mean, it's a big process. So just be drink responsible. Take it from Greg and be responsible. It's not worth going to jail over losing your license and all that. It's a it's a life changing event if that happens to you. So. Just be careful. Well, let me sip on this and we'll come back and we'll do the final chug and grade on this one. Seems pretty damn tasty to me now. A lot better than I remembered the first time I had it. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Been sipping on it about 30 minutes or so. Very tasty beer. Very, very tasty. Uh, I am getting the sweetness from the molasses. Uh, Oak Age gives it a hint of vanilla. The caramel and toffee is there. And, uh, rich sweetness from the malt. Uh, very nice. It is a very well made beer. The alcohol is very well hidden for almost 10%. Uh, 
it's a very tasty, a, a, a really good beer to have at home. Because <laughs> uh, this is so easy drinking, uh, it'd be very easy to drink two or three, four of these. Uh, and then before you know it, you had too many. So uh, let's do the final chug on this one. Uh, awesome smell from the rich malt and the molasses they used in this. It is so well made. Guys, this is definitely an A beer. Got the date on the bottle. I would like to see them put the, uh, the IBUs on the bottle too. It's not on there, but Ray Beer had it listed here. So, 9.8%. Uh, oh, it is listed here. 50 IBUs right here on the other side. So it's got the IBUs, it's got the ABV, and it's got the date written in yellow right here on the bottom. We'd like to see it on the label, but they've used the yellow, the yellow writing instead of the black, which is a little easier to see. But those, as everybody knows, those digitized dates are easy, easily smudged off. So uh, it's got all the information we need. I mean, IBUs, ABV, the date. Uh, it's got the month, day, and the year. And, uh, the year is basically all we need for this. Uh, uh, the vintage on this style of beer since it's going to keep for so long. Uh, and, and nothing in it is going to deter or fade away. Uh, excellent beer. Excellent beer, guys. Uh, not my typical style, but I do enjoy having these beers occasionally. Uh, just to change it up from my typical IPAs and, and stouts that I, that I normally drink as go-to beers. But uh, very nice. It is a very, very nice beer. As far as I'm concerned, guys, it is, uh, I'd like to see a bourbon barrel version of this. That would be excellent. But uh, Oak A's uh, gives that slight hint of vanilla in there. So, uh, very tasty. 9 out of 10 for me on this one, guys. It's definitely worth picking up if you can get Founders beer. And if you can get Founders beer, more than likely you're going to be able to get the uh, Old Curmudgeon. Uh, or Curmudgeon Old Ale is what it's called. Uh, very nice. I enjoyed it. Very nice. Uh, thanks, Evan. I did appreciate it. Uh, should have reviewed it a long time ago. Uh, the first time I had it, it, it kind of blew my palate out of my mouth. It was a little too strong and, and too sweet and uh, too boozy, but not now. I mean, it's uh, uh, a very enjoyable beer. I, I may pick up some of these in the future just to have these. And, and, and may pick up a whole six-pack of them and just stick them in the fridge downstairs and, and enjoy one every six months or a year or so and just see how it... And, and see how one does that after being in the bottle for five years. That would be a good one. Be a good thing for me to do. What do you think? All right, we'll go over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 90 in their outstanding range. I think it's a little better than a 90, but it is an outstanding beer. Very well made. Very, very well made. Surprisingly well made. And over to Rate right Beer, they say overall 98 and 97 in the style. So we're, we're, we're in the 90s all the way around, guys. Uh, from 90 to 98. Uh, if I was putting a numeric rating on this, it would probably be a 98, 97 or a 98. Very damn tasty. Very, very tasty. So if you've had this one from Founders, their Curmudgeon Old Ale, let me know what you think. I thought it was damn delicious. I did. So thanks again, Evan. All right, guys, come on back tomorrow. Let's go see what's in the fridge. Might get lucky and have another one that's got the IBUs, the ABV, and the date on it. Yeah, that's what we need. All right, guys, see you then.